Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm Jeremy Champa. Today we're going to be talking about the last passage of the October 2020 SAT reading section. That is the fifth passage, questions 42 to 52. Now, this is a science passage. Um, most important thing you can remember here is you don't have to know all the science to get started. And there's going to be only a couple details you have to really consider. So it doesn't make sense to read every line. It doesn't make sense to worry about understanding the science. Um, one thing that is worth knowing is the structure of science passages. It can help you a lot. Usually there's an introductory area where they tell us the phenomenon or issue that we're um, discussing. Then they talk about some sort of an experiment or data collection procedure situation. Um, then they talk about the results and oftentimes either the ramifications of the results, so like what those results mean for the real world, or sometimes they'll have another scientist um, weigh in and maybe sort of lightly or not so lightly criticize the science that's been done by, you know, um, the main um, the main researchers in the passage. So that structure of like introduction, procedure, results, and then um, sort of what comes next the maybe a new hypothesis sometimes maybe um the sort of uh, effects of or what we could consider from that um, conclusion so that's the structure let's jump right in with this passage which is called trophic cascades on islands and so you should always read the introduction but that's all the introduction tells us except that there's two dudes that wrote it um okay so let's read key spots here, um, maybe at least this much. In the 1970s, one of us visited more than 500 Bahamian islands to survey distributions of vertebrates with special emphasis on lizards and birds. I'll read a little bit further. A key objective was to determine the threshold island area on which vertebrate populations could just survive. So how big does the island have to be so that vertebrates can survive? Um, I would stop, except it says we are astonished to find that lizards particularly... Okay, these are details. I'm going to skip down to the end. Now, end of the paragraph. This led to a second, even more exciting ex discovery. Such islands sometimes had extraordinarily high densities of spiders, the omnipresent webbing giving them the appearance of the proverbial grandmother's attic. So, something about lizards, something about spiders. Um, in 1981, we had to investigate this phenomenon systematically, for the many small islands in the central Bahamas near the relatively large island of Staniel K, a major stopover in our earlier survey. Our first study found that spiders... Okay, so I don't care about the details. Some sort of a study. Um, and I'll go to the end of the paragraph. This result was quite different from Payne's famous one in the Rocky Intertidal, in which diversity increased with increasing predation, and it presaged other such results for terrestrial arthropods in our system and others also. So presaged is a, a tricky word, um, sort of means, uh, think pre, before, and sage, like knowledge. Sage has wisdom. Uh, a sage has wisdom. So something like it predicted or it came before and showed us what would happen later. Um, and the other thing to get here is like, essentially we're saying that the results that these people are getting, whatever they are, are different from a famous study in which more diversity with more predation. So it sounds like they maybe saw the opposite. Um, next paragraph, such comparative data pointed to a strong negative effect of lizards on spiders. So in other words, not more with more. If there's more lizards, there's less spiders. But as is true of all comparative studies, the observations did not suffice to eliminate alternative hypotheses about why islands with or without lizards might differ. A more reliable investigation would be experimental, and toward that end, we staked out nine. Okay, details about some experiment they're going to do. Massively long paragraph. Go to the end. Um, oh, there's this word, therefore. Um, therefore, so I jump in here. I was going to jump in the next sentence, but I'll go a little bit further back. An increase in spiders did not completely compensate for the absence of lizard. Okay, that was worthless. I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I could read further back, but I'm not going to get lost in the details. I'm just going to move on. So really just this part is what I should have read. There was some effect of the enclosures 
Sticky traps in the enclosed pots caught about 20% fewer arthropod individuals than those in open pots. I don't know what they're talking about. And I don't care. So I'm going to keep reading. What was the mechanism of the now firmly established lizard effect on spiders? Okay. The firmly established effect. It seemed like before over here they were saying um, they weren't sure, but it looked like lizards have a negative effect on spiders. And now it sounds like they feel more sure of that. So now I found out the results of this, the study without reading any of the study. The obvious one is predation. In other words, lizards eating spiders. However, a second is competition for food. Spiders consume large prey in re relation to their own size. So lizards and spiders might overlap in prey size well beyond their relative body sizes alone. So in other words, even though spiders are small, they might eat the same stuff as lizards, even though lizards are bigger. And that's it, I think. There's nothing more. So let's jump into these questions. All I know is that like spiders and lizards, it seems like lizards are, when there's lizards, there's less spiders, and we don't know exactly why. It could be predation or it could be they eat the same stuff. All right, what does check mean? This is a vocabulary or a words in context question. What you should do is you should go back to line 11 in this case, and you should read around there, put your own word or phrase in the place, and then check out the answers. Last step will be to use the answers back in the place of the word check. This first step is a way of making sure you have sort of multiple steps so that you don't have one single step that could fail you. So we realized that we had to look at many quite small islands in order to determine such thresholds. And in the course we came up, okay, so look at a number of islands. So I think inspect is probably right. Look at does not mean counter. That means sort of the opposite. Check would be like um, checks and balances in a government. Check, stop might mean something similar to counter. Um, mark the islands or inspect the islands. Um, well, let's see. I think it's inspect. I said look at. Let's just double check though. So they're looking at these islands. We realized that we had to inspect many islands to determine such thresholds. In the course of that endeavor, we can Okay, yeah. So... It's going to be inspect. It sounds perfect in the place there. Um, they're not marking the islands. They may be like doing data, and that's why, you know, I think check and mark, like a check mark, that's why that's there. It's sort of a primary definition. Primary definitions are almost always wrong. Okay, jumping, not always, I should say, but, you know, most of the time they're wrong. So if I was in between those two, I would think about which one's the primary definition. I mean, inspect is sort of like a primary definition too. So right, to inspect something, to look at something, to check it. So really, you can't really say the primary is out here because they're both, C and D are both sort of like very standard or primary definitions for the word check. In this case, inspect sounded better. And that's my last stop is always putting this word in the place of the original. Okay, so number 43 says... The parenthetical statements in 25 to 27 and 30 to 33 primarily serve to. Most of the time when you do a question like this, you're going to look above and below when it says primarily serve to. So let's go do that. 25, 27, 30 to 33. Um, okay, so what's happening? Here's these lines. I'm going to read a little bit around them. So starting at the beginning of the sentence maybe. Our first study found that spiders were about an order of magnitude denser on no lizard than lizard islands. And then the stuff below says, A second observational study in 82 examined number of spider species found that no lizard islands had 1.5 to 2 times the number of species that as lizard islands. Okay, so in other words, there's more spiders and more kinds of spiders when there's no lizards around. That's what I'm seeing in and around the parenthetical phrases. So it's important to know what the parenthetical phrases are talking about. Um, but let's say we start by saying something about the number of spiders. So I will go back and read that stuff, but um, can see that the correlation is weaker, maybe. Um, all these things are about spider populations, so I can't cross that off. Now I actually have to look at the lines or the actual things in parentheses. Usually uh, my first stop is just reading around there to see if I can get rid of answer choices, and oftentimes you can just find the right answer just based on that. What do we have here? Adjusted for the positive and negative correlations with area and distance from large land masses, respectively. In other words, this idea that there's more... There's... Um, more spiders, a, a population density that's higher when there's no lizards is adjusted. They're not like 
they're taking into account stuff like how big is the landmass, how far away is it from, um, so how big is the area of the island, how far is it away from a larger island or a larger landmass. And then area and distance again adjusted. So in other words, you're taking account of these other things for the maximum height attained by the vegetation of the plant. Okay, so other things they're taking account of. Um, so um, other things they're taking account of additional variables. That's B, right? Um, they're not saying that the, the correlation is weaker. They're not admitting it's weaker. They're not conceding that it's weaker. They're saying, we thought of these other issues, like how big the island is, right? Um, now, C is pretty close. Um, look, we didn't explain why the, the nature of the data is unusual. We just said we got this data, and we considered how big the island is, because probably if it's a bigger island, maybe there's more spider populations or something, right? Um, so that's why D is out, but C is pretty close. It's wrong, but it's pretty close. Dismiss a possible objection? Yes. Not an objection, however, to assumptions that the researchers made while recording the observations. They didn't make any assumptions that they're admitting to here. They may have made assumptions. We always do when we do science. But they're not admitting some assumptions they made. They're saying, look, we thought of those things that you're worried about. Like, yeah, but the island was really big or it was really small. They're like, yeah, we thought of that. Yeah, but the vegetation, they're like, yeah, we thought of that. So they're not dismissing an objection to the assumptions the researchers made. They're dismissing an objection to the data, not to the, re the assumptions. They're clarifying that their data considered the thing that you might be objecting to. Wait a second, the island size, something like that. C is really close, but it's not an objection to any assumption that the researchers made. We don't know about any assumptions they made. They're not like, we assumed that, or like, we we assigned a value. No, they didn't say like they just like came up with their own stuff. So that's why there's no assumption here. Okay, so number 44. It can be reasonably inferred from the passage that the observational studies in the early 1980s were significant in part because they... Now look, this could be a little bit tricky, except it is an evidence set, and it talks about the 80s, so I would use that and also chronology. So it should be after 30 and 33. Um, which means it's probably just D. It's the only one after this. I'll, I'll also consider these other ones, but I'll start with 34 to 38. Does 34 to 38 say something significant about the observational studies of the early 80s? Well, when are we talking about the, okay, so the 80s, this experiment we were just reading about is the 80s. Okay, look, this does tell us something important about that. They said the result is different than this other study. And it kind of told us ahead of time, it presaged what else would happen. So 34 to 38, because of chronology, looks really good. Um, yeah, look, look at this one. It was inconsistent with findings of an earlier investigation into a similar relationship. That's literally, so we could play this mapping game. Inconsistent with the findings that maps onto... Um, quite different. This result was quite different, so inconsistent with the findings. From Payne's famous one, so a famous study, of a similar area. Yeah, okay, cool. So intertidal zone, something about ecosystems and something. I don't have to know all the details. This answer really maps on to 34 to 38. So the fact that it maps on really nicely and the fact that it's the only one that's chronologically not violating the rule that questions usually go in order means that I'm done with that question. Now, this is a great example of, I'm sure there are some important stuff in 23 to 27 and 27 to 33. Um, but we're wondering why were the, the stuff in the 80s significant? And the, the getting lost into the weeds of like what the study found here through i mean this is all the results they found but i i understand why you would pick that and you could make some crazy argument for the details of that here's what i'll say my experience with the sat has allowed me to limit my search 
and say those areas are probably wrong unless the the sort of one that makes the most sense chronologically questions are chronological those lines are after or from the previous question it seems like it should be this one down here 34 to 38 secondly that seems like really technical something about there's lots of lizards or whatever <laughs> that just seems extremely technical there's probably something wrong with the answers down here um about like um I mean, this looks good, um, but just to say that they have more diverse spider populations is not the same thing as saying that they're overall more diverse. That's what's wrong with A. Um, and then this is wrong. D is wrong because it's, it's a new idea. It's opposite of what they expected. They were surprised by these findings. Um, so, and I don't know if it's a new method for studying the effect of land area on species population data. We're talking about the effect of like lizards on spiders and vice versa, I think is what we're talking about. Um, these are all related, but notice that wasn't that hard for me because I knew that this evidence should be chronological. And so I based it off of just knowing 34 to 38 looked to be right. It did talk about a result. If it didn't talk about a result or why it was important, then I wouldn't go with that. But it did say that um, there was a, you know, to go back up to the lines here, it said um, this result, sorry, my scrolling can really go wrong with, I got all these applications over. This result was quite different. So we are talking about why the results are important or notable. Okay, 46. Based on the passage, the primary advantage the experimental study had over the observational studies was that it could. Okay, so look, we just did the previous question, which told us 34 to 38, so it should be below that. Um, and that's no problem. There's nothing chronologically out of order with 47. Let's see about 48. So 48 says line 51. Now, vocabulary is a, is a bad boundary generally speaking, but it's mostly right. You know, you can't say, I think I've seen situations where it's wrong, but they're rare. So, I mean, these two that are after 51 are less likely to be true. Let's look at the first two. So what's the advantage, the primary advantage of experimental over observational studies? 39 to 46. Um... Such comparative data pointed to a strong negative effect of lizards on spiders, but as is true with all comparative studies, the observations did not suffice to eliminate alternative hypotheses. Uh, about, uh, sorry, about what, how or why? Uh, about why islands with and without lizards might differ. A more reliable investigation would be experimental, and toward that end we staked out nine approximately 83 square meter plots. Okay, so they did this investigation to sort of eliminate sort of the uh, issue. So they're saying maybe something else is affecting the lizards and the spiders. We can't just say because there's a lizards and spiders relationship that the lizards and spiders are affecting each other. It could be other things affecting them. We need to do an experiment. Okay, so that's at least related to the idea of experimental versus observational studies. I can map on to the question. So every time you're doing evidence sets you want to be able to map on. I can map this idea of experimental and observational on to 39 to 46. Um, we're not talking about human main structures. Even though we made human structures, we're not asking about the effects of those structures. We're asking those structures are supposed to show us the effects of lizards on spiders and vice versa. Control for factors that may have influenced the results of the research observational studies. Yeah, that sounds pretty darn good. Um, we're not trying to isolate lizards and spiders from any other species. C is wrong because they they want to sort of put these these little guardrails up so we can keep them in a spot and measure what's going on. But we're not getting rid of all the other species. That's why C is wrong. Um, and we're not trying to understand the whole ecosystem. We're trying to understand spiders versus lizards. So that's why D is out. So the evidence here, 39 to 46, looks really good. Um, and it maps onto this idea of control for factors. Let's map on to control for factors that might have influenced the research, the results of studies, observational studies. Okay, I muttered through that, but um, 
really, I think this phrase at the bottom of the page, up onto the top, eliminate alternative hypotheses about why islands might differ. So we needed to get rid of sort of other issues, right? And then down here, um, control for other, you know, for the factors. We had to, there may have been alternative hypotheses about what's going on there. So that's why that's the best answer. I will say 52 to 56 is pretty tempting here. Because it says something like, let's look at it. It says, um, thus we had three treatments and they could be compared pretty much. Um, but here's what I know that helps me get that, like avoid that evidence. That evidence is problematic because it's out of order and it's super specific. It doesn't talk about observational versus experimental. It implies that there's an advantage to experimental, but it doesn't talk about the difference between the two. That's why that answer is wrong. Okay. So we did 47. So the thing is, even though that maps on 52 to 56 maps on to B pretty good, it doesn't map onto the question because it doesn't talk about the original observational study versus experimental. It just says the experimental study was working. Right, so it's too specific. It doesn't map onto the question, even though it maps onto the answer, and it's chronologically out of order. There's no way that's going to be the right answer with all those strikes against it. So 48, what does maintain most nearly mean? Well, let's go up to line 51 and check it out. On line 51, three of the enclosed spots were randomly chosen to keep lizards at natural densities, and I think keep was actually a word, but I just put my own word in there, and I got a little bit lucky. We're not promoting lizards or defending lizards or declaring lizards. So put these words in the exact place of the word maintain, and only one of them should sound right. Um, moving on here, um, which of the following findings, if true, would best support the explanation presented in 71 to 74? Well, let's see what that explanation is. 71 to 74. Um, oh, the second is composition for food. So why are there, you know, less spiders when there are more lizards it sounds like this food thing spiders consume large prey in relation to their own size so lizards and spiders might overlap in prey size well beyond their relative body sizes alone okay so the total insect biomass consumed by spiders was reduced in lizard enclosures and unenclosed let's compare the biomass consumed by okay so this looks pretty good that is saying the, the spiders are eating less when there's lizards around. Um, the survivor rate of spiders was significantly higher in lizard removal enclosures than in lizard enclosures and unenclosed plots. The survival rate isn't the same thing as what they're eating, so it's not directly useful there. Fewer spiders were found closer to the ground. Okay, so this sounds like a predation thing again, where like lizards were eating them or something. Um, this isn't as direct. Maybe they hunt on the ground or something, but that's not as direct. Insects consumed by spiders in unenclosed plots were significantly larger on average than insects in lizard enclosures and lizard remo Um Okay, so the pro D sounds dead right until you think about which enclosures they're talking about. They're saying the spiders are eating bigger bugs in the open containers than they are when there's no lizards around or when there's lizards enclosed. So D doesn't make sense because it's saying spiders. I mean, here's how D would work. If it were correct, it would say insects consumed by spiders in um, lizard removal enclosures where there's no lizards around were significantly larger. If they ate bigger bugs when there were no lizards around, that would be perfect. But D mixes up the language. So it's answer choice A in this case for 49. Um, so that was really close with D. Notice that difference. That's a key. That's why you don't want to just pick the first answer that sounds great. You want to kind of like weigh two options like we just did there. Okay, according to figure one, the overall mean population of spiders in plots where lizards were removed was between plots where lizards were removed, figure one. Okay, so that's this guy. The mean number of... Wait, so sorry. I need to figure out what's... The overall mean population of spiders. Oh, so it's this range. We just want the mean number of spiders of all species. So the overall mean, I don't know. It's like in the middle here. I would say like between the you know the lows and the highs. So I don't know, about 100? 75 and 100, I would say, or 100 and 125. Let's see. 
100 and 125. Hmm. I would say it's between 175. And that's just like, you would maybe look carefully there, but like, that's just sort of an eyeball test thing. Because I thought it was a, you know, a little bit below 100. The information in figure one most strongly suggests that. Um, well, let's just see what our options are. Spiders prey more on insects in the fall than the spring. Something about seasons. Larger populations. Number of lizards in a given plot varies over time. The presence of lizards help reduce variability in the number of spiders over time. So if there's lizards, the spiders kind of stay the same population or don't change as much. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, the number of spiders is the, the, the ones we just saw. The dotted line is like all over the place and there's less fluctuation when there's either natural density of lizards or uh, unenclosed plots, meaning there's definitely lizards there. So there's less fluctuation. So I can definitely say um, that D is the right answer here. Now, you could go back through and see what's technically wrong with some of these other answers. It's going to be little things. Um, for instance, um, fall and spring. We don't know if the spiders are even eating them, if that's why they're going away. I mean, there's a that's a big maybe. That's why A is out. Um, spider populations tend to be larger in the spring than in the summer. Um, I don't... No, because like March is the spring, and then like the high point is May 25th, which is still technically spring. Yeah, I mean, they are higher in the spring there, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say spring. There's like these wild fluctuations. Like, I guess this is a high point and this is a low point, but like if this is the spring, isn't this the, definitely the summer? And they seem to be about the same here and here. So I couldn't say that spring's higher than the summer. Um, and we don't know anything about the number of lizards, um, just the number of spiders. And then the last question in this passage, which of the following statements does the information in figure two best support? Um, well, let's see. What is figure two even about? Oh my God, all this stuff. Percent composition of lizard diets and adult female spider diets in lizard effect experiments. So the different kind of food they eat. Let's just see what our options are. Um, the removal of the species would have a large effect on the analogous lizard diets. Lepidoptera. Um, no, it's not a big percentage of their diet, so that can't be it. Um, gosh, sorry, the scrolling is just driving me nuts. The Heptera species are much larger than the species. Um, we don't know that. We don't, we don't know which ones they typically feed on, so that's out. We don't know the size, I don't think, either. So, yeah, we don't have any idea what the size are. By taxonomic order, taxonomic order, I don't even know what that means. Um, and I don't think we should have to. Um... In the experiment, anolis lizards were not dependent on any single food source. I mean, totally. That's absolutely true. Because look, there's all this different stuff that they ate. Sorry, I'm having a hard time getting back there. Yeah, they. I mean, they eat all this different stuff. So it's definitely that one, which was what? Answer choice C. Um, They weren't dependent on a single food source because we see all these different food sources they have. So with um, data questions, always good to... Uh, make sure you can cross off all the other answers. Um, you know, for instance, D, we don't know about the sample size. We have no idea what that is in, in the figure, right? So get rid of all the wrong answers. Be um, conservative crossing answers out, but once you know they're wrong, cross them off. So I hope that's helpful. I encourage, excuse me, I encourage you to um, do this work with friends, compare notes, try out my ideas on new questions and make sure it works for you. And if not, get in touch. Let me know what's going on. Let me know if something seems confusing. I promise we'll be able to figure out the discrepancy you're seeing. Um, and I'd be happy to help. So get in touch if you'd like. If not, happy studying. Take care.